Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. As usual, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I would greatly appreciate it. And as you can see, we're we're just about to hit 100 subscribers, so thank you so much if you've already subscribed. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions about what you would like to see next, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. And with that, let's kind of jump into it. So in this video that I posted a while back, uh, I got this comment right here from John Bo Jones, and he was basically asking this question right here. Is it possible to enter text into the screen element, which is then which is in, then displayed in the PDF that is created? And as usual, I did respond with what I think would be possible or what you could do to make that a reality. But I think I'll want to show that in a video as well. And I guess to kind of provide some background context, if you're not familiar with this, uh, this video right here, uh, I basically created a video to show how to create and email a PDF in Salesforce using Visual Force Apex and Flows. So if you haven't already seen this video and you're interested in it, I would recommend doing so. Uh, and I'll even leave that in the, de the description box below. But uh, let's kind of jump into it. And I think for today, instead of using the Dev Console, we're going to make use of our vis uh, of a Visual Studio Code, which is also another video I had made earlier, which is right here and this one. So basically the two most up-to-date videos I had prior to this new video I'm uploading. So let's go ahead and do that. But actually, before we jump into it, uh, I do want to kind of show some updates I made to that. So if we jump into our Trailhead org, you'll see here that this is the visual, uh, the flow component that we created. And it might look a little different compared to the other uh, video that I had released prior. And pretty much the changes, I removed the checkbox because like how I said in my pinned comment right here that the checkbox isn't actually needed. Uh, we can kind of just use the email input to, to uh, validate and verify if we should uh, uh, run the Apex action. So as you can see here, uh, I just have an email input now. And additionally, you can see here that right now, since I kind of tabbed out of it, it, it's now giving us a little message or basically complaining that we have to complete this field before we can hit the email invoice. And the way to do that is if we jump into our flow and we click into the screen and we click into the element itself and the required, you just change this from true to false. So basically I just changed it to true right there and now it's a required field. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into our code itself to kind of see how we can, to see how we could basically add more elements to the screen and then make sure that they're passed into the Visual Force page that gets rendered as a PDF. So the first thing I want to do is, like I said, let's jump into our Visual Studio code. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Shift P because I'm on a Mac. And if you're on PC, I'm pretty sure it's Control Shift P. And I'm going to go ahead and create a project with, with a manifest. That is the command we're going to run. And I'll use a standard one and we'll just call this one invoice PDF. That's fine. And I'm just going to make sure that this gets dropped in my desktop. That's OK. And like I said, I've made videos in the past about how all this works. So feel free to watch those videos, which I'll also probably link down in the description box below. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm connected to the org. So I will go ahead and click on this button at the bottom. And I will make sure I use the connection I had established prior, which I had called trailhead org. So we'll click on that. The command will run after a few seconds. It's connected. And what I want to grab is those Apex files that we had, or the Apex class and Visual Force page we had created for the invoice PDF. So I will click into, or rather, if I click into Force app main default and then click on classes, you'll see here there's nothing there. So let's click on the org browser. And this will let us look to see what is in our org that we're connected to. And I already know what I want. I want an Apex class that is called invoice PDF something, I believe. I don't remember the exact name, but I'm going to just kind of scroll down and, and I'll find it that way. So it's right here, invoice PDF controller. So I'll go ahead and click on this little download button. And as you can see here, more commands run and they're basically retrieving it. And as well, I want to retrieve that Visual Force page as well because we're going to make a change to it. So I'll go ahead and look for our Visual Force page uh, directory. And then I'll make sure that we also download the invoice PDF view right here. And after that is downloaded, we can go back to our Explorer tab right here. And we can see that we now have the invoice PDF controller, as well as if we click into the, the pages directory right here, we'll see that we have the invoice PDF view. So I'm going to go ahead and double click these to open them up. 
like so. So we now have both of those. And this isn't really necessary. Like I said, you could just use a dev console if you wanted. But since I've made so many of these setup videos for Visual Studio Code, and I actually prefer to code in VS Code, uh, I just will probably use this going forward as much as possible. So let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit. And like that person had asked, they wanted to know if it was possible to basically have a screen element in that flow be passed down to this visual force page right here that gets rendered as a PDF. And essentially using the, the kind of like the tricks we've already set up right here, we can do that. And I do kind of want to pre preface this by saying, I don't know if this is the best way of doing so. And I probably would even argue that it's probably not the best way because essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new uh, variable, kind of like how we have the account right here that the visual force page can then reference. And essentially to get that ported over from the screen, uh, the screen flow, into the visual force page, I'm going to just uh, use this, the exact same trick that we had used uh, when pass uh, with the, that collection variable that we'll kind of go over in a bit. But the reason why I say it's probably not the best way is because I'm going to pass it in as a parameter right here, kind of like how we did for the record ID. And I'm pretty sure that there is a limit to the amount of characters you can pass in as, as, as a parameter. So, you know, if you have a lot of a lot of variables or a lot, a lot of things that you want to pass in through from the screen flow into your visual force page, this might not be the way to go about it. And I'll kind of talk about uh, towards the end of this video, some alternatives that might be possible. But anyways, let's kind of jump into it. Like I said, I'm going to at the top right here, I'm going to create. And for this purpose, I'm only going to create one one variable that will pass through from the screen flow into visual force page. Um, and you can feel free to create as many as you can or as you want. Uh, with just keeping that that lim that potential limit in mind. So in this case, I'm going to create a public string and we'll just call this message and we'll set the getter and setter so that our visual force page can retrieve that. I'll go ahead and click save and we'll jump into the visual force page. And I think I'll just kind of display it here right after the the invoice summary. So we'll say H2 like that and we'll even give it a class. We'll say this is a heading. And we'll call this heading sub or let's see. Yeah, we'll call this heading main two. And I'm kind of just making stuff up at this point. So it's not really important. And we have to make sure that, that the class is within the within the carrot like so. And in here, we're going to use this syntax to reference that message variable that's in our in our controller class. And let's go ahead and create this class right here as well, because we don't actually I'm pretty sure this doesn't exist in our CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this once and then kind of just paste it there and we'll give this a name of main two and we'll just say that the pixel size will be like 24 or something just to kind of differentiate between the main class and the main two class, uh, which the main class is for the H1 tag and the main two class is for the H2 tag. It's not really important, but just to kind of see the difference, I guess it's nice. So that's all we need to do to the visual force page. Back in our controller class, like I said here, we have already created the, the string message with the getter and setter, so visual force page can reference it. And now back here in our generate PDF, which is the invocable, invocable method that the screen flow will access, we're going to say, and we haven't done this yet, but pretend we already kind of done, we pretend we already have access to it. We're going to go ahead and create a string message variable here, and we're going to pretend that that it is the third element in our or in our args uh, collection variable that's passed in from the screen flow. So once we have that, and actually instead of writing out every single param right here, let's go ahead and create a brand new string variable, and we'll just call this params. And I'm going to say that the params is equal to the account ID. And then we'll give it the account ID, which is just a record ID like that. And then we'll add another param. And to add additional parameters, you can use the ampersand like so. And we'll say that the message will be equal to the message. And then we can finish it off. So just to kind of like, I guess, refractor our code slightly, which as I always make a point of saying, this is by no means production grade code. So, so just keep that in mind that this is probably not best for production. There, there are probably cleaner ways of doing so. 
But anyways, like I said earlier, we are going to, in a moment, we'll go back to our screen flow and we'll make sure that we pass in as the third element in this collection variable, the message that we will get from the user from that screen flow. And we're basically just going to pass it in as a parameter to our new page reference that creates the visual force page rendered as a PDF. And because this is a brand new, basically we're creating an instance of our visual force page, the constructor will run. So all we have to do here, kind of like how we did for the, the account ID that we grabbed it as a parameter, we're also going to grab, grab the message. And you'll notice here, we don't actually have to create a new message variable because we already created it here as a, with the getter and setter. So we can remove this string declaration and just say message is equal to apex pages dot current page like so get parameters, basically just kind of copying what we have for the account ID. And we're going to grab the message and with that we've essentially and essentially what's going to happen is when the screen flow runs uh whenever someone visits the account page i guess or an account record this method right here will get triggered whenever they hit on the whenever they click the send button and it's going to collect all that information from the screen flow one of them being the email the other one being the message and the record id gets passed in uh, whenever you visit an account record page and it's going to call a make a reference or create an instance of a visual force page which if we jump into the visual force page right here it has this controller uh, set as the invoice pdf controller so at that point the constructor will then run right here and you'll see that it is getting the account id from that parameter as well as this now brand new message variable as well that was passed in from the screen flow. And because our string message has a getter and setter, like right here, it should be able to grab that and display it here in this H2 tag. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, now, kind of like the last thing we need to do is we need to go into our screen flow, or actually before we do even do that, we have to make sure that, that these are saved and we have to actually push these back up to our, our org or else you know we'll still be using the old code. So let's go ahead and right click on the class and I'm going to say deploy source to org right here. And the command is going to run and it looks like we've now deployed that to the org. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the visual force page. So deploy source to org. Once that is done, we can now jump into our screen flow. So back here in the screen flow, though, basically one of the last things we want to do is we want to click on our screen and I'm going to go ahead and grab this text element component right here and just kind of drag it to the bottom. And we'll give this a name of message, which I guess would make sense because that's what we titled the, gave the variable in our Apex class a message. And I won't make it a required field and I'll kind of just leave that as is. And I think that's it for now. So we'll click on done right here. Once we have that, we don't need to do anything right here because our message uh, value isn't required. Let's jump into the assignment set args that we have denoted here. And like I said earlier, we're just going to add a third element to that collection variable. So just add and do the add operator. And then we're going to look for that message like so. And we'll click on done. So essentially what we just did is going based off the, the previous video is we're just adding that third element, which is the message variable. And that's pretty much all we need to do, because if we jump into our apex action, you'll see here that the argument is still the same. We're still passing in a collection uh, variable, which is a list of list of strings in this case. So with that done, we let's go ahead and click on save as, and we'll just create a new version. That's fine. And we'll click on activate. And now if we jump into our or any account record and let's kind of click refresh. You should see here that we now have our message value right here. So let's go ahead and type in an email. And in this case, I'm going to use the same one as last time. I will say the lads podcast 42 at gmail.com. And the message will be pay now or something. I, I, don't, I don't really know what to give it. So we'll just say pay now and we'll click on email invoice. You'll see here after a few seconds, the page kind of refreshed. And if I pull up that email, we can see here that just a few minutes ago or a minute ago, we received a brand new email. And if we click into it and we click on the actual PDF right here, you'll see here that 
right underneath the H1 tag, which was the invoice summary, we have this message, which I guess is kind of dynamic in nature, since this came from the screen element and the user, which in this case was me, provided this pay now. So again, kind of, kind of just to hammer it home, let's do it one more time. So again, we'll type in the email, the lads podcast 42 at gmail.com. And the message will be hello again, something like that. We'll click on email invoice and let's jump back into our email. We'll see here, here is another invoice. And if we click into it, you see here the, the text, hello again. So hopefully it's helpful to Jumbo Jones, which is what he was asking if it was possible to display any text into this, into the screen element on the PDF itself. And yeah, it turns out it is possible, but like I said, and I do want to make this very, very clear that if we jump into our visual, uh, into our code right here, and if we scroll down, I want to say, and I'm not entirely sure, but there is a limit to the amount of params that you can pass in and not, not necessarily that there's a limited amount of params. It's that there is a character limit that's probably enforced by the browser. Uh, so you might not be able to, I mean, if it's a lot of information that you want to basically pass in this way, it might not be possible. And kind of like how I responded to their comment right here towards the end, basically said that it might be, there might be a better way of doing it. And that is using this concept of the, of the invocable variable annotation. And I've seen that you can basically create a, an inner class with a lot of these different variables that have the invocable, invocable variable annotation. And your screen flow is then able to see those variables. And I think doing it that way, it might be possible to pass in much more information to the visual force page without that potential limitation I've mentioned. But this is kind of like at the outer edge of what I understand with screen flows at this point. So what I think I'll do is I'll do some research and see and play around with it a bit. And if I'm able to figure it out, then I'll post a video about it. So yeah, I hope this kind of helps and I'll catch you guys in the next video.